Hey, it's Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and guess what? We are here doing our block five of our embroidery sampler lessons. So by now you should have a good handle on hooping and stitching out your designs. So the purpose of this month's block is to take you down a little tour of the Bernina embroidery software. We're working in version eight this time, but you know, version nine is on the horizon and we promise we'll be working in version nine too, but probably on some other uh, projects. So um, this month's block is the beautiful wreath design. This was created with two different designs from your CD, the Rugs to Riches design CD with designs designed by Linda Lee from OESD. And you can get those from Bernina of Naperville under the Embroidery Sampler Class product page. So um, let's have a look at our block. I misspoke just a moment ago because I said this month's block, but I really meant to say this lesson's block because we've already done this hands-on in the store. Um, so now we're just repeating this for our online community. So hope that didn't confuse any of you. <laughs> but here is this lesson and it's this beautiful wreath, like I mentioned. So we're going to be working with the, the software to create this wreath maker, and we're gonna be doing it twice, once with this uh, curly Q design, and then another time with the leaves. And then I'm actually gonna show you how to quilt it, but I'm gonna show you how to use the Bernina Crystal Work software. Now, this software, unfortunately, is being um, phased out by Bernina, but we still have some at the store if you're so inclined and you're local and you can come pick that up um, because I really do think it's really fun. Plus, with the tool, we are gonna be making certain designs that you can download. So stars and hearts and things like that, we're gonna have in the bag for you to download off of our Bernina of Naperville site. So that, that's for future um, projects and, and things like that. So before we get too into the nitty gritty of the little bling, let's go ahead and get started with our software lesson in Bernina software version eight. Okay, who's ready to get started making this super cool wreath? So as you can see here, I've got the number 17 design pulled into my computer. I already changed the colors of it. And now all I wanna do is make it a wreath. So it's pretty easy. Uh, one thing that will make, thing, make life easy for yourself is if you kind of draw a little box around it by left clicking and dragging and then making sure that you have the item grouped. So I'm gonna right click on it and see how ungroup is shown. That shows me that I indeed do have it grouped. So now I can just click on the design and it's grouped together. All right, now we're gonna go over here to our toolboxes and the mirror merge is also the toolbox that holds the wreath tool. So we're just gonna select wreath and then once you select that, you want to tell it, well, how many wreaths do you want to make? And in this month's exercise, it's six. So I'm going to hit six and enter. And then you can see I've got all of those pieces right there now. I do want to kind of come up here and just zoom out just a little bit. So we can see what we're doing. And there's a couple different ways that you can make this wreath. You can actually go over and you could make it look like this, where it, you know, kind of has a little border design like this. You could do it where the tip is down here. I mean, this is where you can kind of get creative. And so I don't really care how you make this wreath, but this is how I made it. So, okay, so I had mine positioned just about like this. So then I'm just going to left click and that sets my design. Easy, right? I'm gonna go ahead and pick the large oval hoop. Now, I do realize that some of you are gonna have the maxi hoop and that's fine, but we just wanna set this wreath for right now based on the size of the large hoop. So what I'm gonna do is Control-A to select all. I'm gonna Control-A 
and then also do a control G to group. And that's just gonna make it easier for us to be able to kind of wiggle this down without breaking it apart. So now I want to take this and rotate it a little bit. You can rotate your design by clicking on it again and you get these little white handles. And I'm just gonna to rotate it until I get it making like a little X formation. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to left click on it again, and I'm just going to reduce the size by dragging that corner piece, I'm proportionately reducing my design. and then just play around with it until it, you know, might seem a little straight there in your hoop. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Now I want to insert a design. And as we know, we're also working with this leaf design while I happen to have it open. So I can, of course, insert the design or I can just drag my little box around it Control G to group it, and then Control C to copy. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste this. And then kind of line up your pieces how you would like them. And I think that looks pretty good. So now, once again, I'm going to go back to my wreath maker, and I'm going to select six, which is already selected. And now I'm going to very carefully position all of these kind of so they're all on the same spot. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK or click left click. And now my whole bit looks fantastic. I just love it. So now I'm going to um, control A and I'm going to just click again, control G just to hold it together. Then I'm gonna click it again so I can kind of maneuver things around for my multi-hooping. And just make sure that this is going to fit. We want to make sure that these two leaves fit and all of our purple designs and these two leaves. These two leaves are going to be our second hooping. So I'm just going to And then I think I'm just going to tweak this just a little bit to make it just a wee bit smaller. Remember, I'm working with the whole design together. Okay, I think I've wiggled it into position. And so now I'm just gonna right click and ungroup. And then my goal here is to get rid of these two. So I'm gonna control and click and control X to delete. And now I wanna save this as this. We'll just call it block five hoop one. And then I'm gonna do a new design and control V for paste. And then let's go ahead and rotate this. And now let's just call this, save this as, block five, hoop two. So 
So that's how you make your two hooper. Now, of course, let's go to undo. So now here is something fun that you're really going to enjoy. Let's click on, let's right click on our hoop. And now let's go to the maxi hoop. We don't have to do anything. It's going to stitch out just fine in the maxi hoop with one hooping. So yay for the maxi hoop. And now once you have everything that you need, you're just going to go ahead and either send your two hoop designs to your stick or your single hooping design to the stick. Now, for those of you that have the maxi hoop or the jumbo hoop, you know you can just hoop this up and stitch it right out. There's no special hooping instructions and there's no special things going on. But for those of you that just have the large oval hoop out there, let's see how you can turn this design into a two hooper. As you can see, I have the first section of of the uh, block five stitched out. I opted to do the sample with the large hoop. So for those of you that only have the large hoop option, you'll know how to do this. Now, this is an easy, easy, easy thing. If you have a maxi hoop or a jumbo hoop, you'll be clearly able to do this without any multiple hoopings, but you're gonna get the files to do it both ways. So I did take a moment to print out my second hooping. So what I did is when I put the, when I hooped this, um, you may or may not, depending on how your machine is gonna interpret the file that I made, have to just rotate the design like a one degree, you know, and that helped make sure that that fit in my large hoop. But now the next thing to do is to take our design here and we want to line that up just so. Now I didn't print this on vellum so it's not see-through. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just cut this a little close here, like this. Now don't forget if you have pinpoint placement, you're gonna use that instead of these templates, but. And also hopefully the way that this works is if this doesn't come out perfectly lined up, it's not gonna be that noticeable anyway. So let's just say we want this point right there to kind of line up with that hump. See how the points kind of line up with that little spot right there? That's where we want this to be. And so this is going to be the top of our design. And then I'm just going to hoop this up with my template. So I'm just going to place this in the center of my hoop like this. Just using some low tech scotch tape. There we go. Just a little hooping 101 business. Don't forget your little arrow is going to point to your belly and going to be down in that side of the hoop. And the template, you want to make sure it reads Bernina. And then I am going to loosen my hoop just a little bit so I can get this squeezed into place. And now, like I've done a million times, I'm going to squeeze my project down into my hoop, just like so. All right, and let's see. You know, I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out. All right, let's see how it goes. Here I am at my trusty Bernina 880 Plus. And I just wanna show you if this method is the one where we're not gonna use pinpoint placement. This is the method where you're just gonna use this template and get everything adjusted just right. So let's first look, this is gonna be the center of this design, right here, that it, this symbol that's on the template. 
I want to just concentrate on putting the center of my needle, once I determine that, right there on the spot of that template. So one of the first ways I like to do that is by selecting the hoop and selecting this little crosshair design. That's going to move my needle right to the center of the design. And now I say OK or check mark or X mark. Now I'm going to select my inspect button and my move around design and I'm going to move it down So now that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to remove my template. And then I'm going to get started with sewing. For those of you with pinpoint placement, that's pretty easy. So you're going to go into your inspect button and we're going to choose the pinpoint placement. Now there is two ways to do pinpoint placement. There's the grid but because we need to kind of line this little vine up a certain way, it's best that we use this one. This is the little butterfly here. And I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so that you can see exactly where I'm gonna to be touching. Just right there. Now that I have that lined up in just the right spot, I need to turn my needle so that it goes just about right there. So I'm going to use my top knob, which is going to go to the side, and then move that down. So now I like it exactly where that is. So now so now I'm going to say set, and now I'm going to touch the bottom piece, and I wanna make sure that that is starting exactly where I need it to go as well. And I think I'm just gonna move it to the side just a little bit. All right. Now I'm ready to go, I hit set, I close, and now I'm ready to stitch. And I'm gonna thread up my dark green and my light green, and I'll be finished. Well, at least with the embroidery part. So I did a little trimming up of this block once it was complete, and then I put it with the batting and the backing. So the backing goes on wrong side up, then the batting, then the embroidered piece goes on pretty side up. So we're gonna do that, then we're gonna quilt. And you know what? I didn't use the Bernina stitch regulator this month. I used the number 26 foot, forgive me, but it's just a little bit of stuff and I think that you can handle it. Our embroidery is complete. We just need to put our batting and backing with it. And this month, we're gonna trim this down before we quilt it. So we want this to be roughly about 10 inches wide, 12 inches tall. We still can finagle it a little bit once we get our quilt all put together. But for now, we're just gonna trim this to 10 inches by 12 inches. And that's gonna start by using our 12 and a half inch ruler and this is about the center right here so i'm just going to line up the five inch mark down here and the six inch mark so six and six is 12 and five and five is 10. so this is how we're gonna square this up leave it just like that and now i'm going to cut all the way around Gotta move this down just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm gonna turn this around. And finish the job. 10 by 12. Ten. 
10 by 12. And that centers our little wreath right up in there. And now we're ready to take our batting and our backing and make our little sandwich. In my instructions, or the handout, I was pretty clear that you're not to do any stitching in the ditch this time. Well, now, Gail, what do we do? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. So I'm just going to make my own kind of kaleidoscope here. And I've taken my blue water soluble pen. This is one with a super fine tip. And I am gonna draw, and I already drew this, but I'm a little bit more heavy handed here. So you can see a little bit. And I'm gonna just do this design. It's gonna be kind of like a little feather. in a little spiral formation around the world. So, without further ado, let's get started. I promised that I would show you how to use the crystal work software and it's really fun and kind of addictive a little bit so let's just get the elevator speech and the down and dirty on how we made this little circle okay so when we're using design works there are three different things that you can use design works for cut work paint work and crystal work today we are going to use crystal work and let me show you how cool and awesome and easy it is so we're going to start with a new design i'm just going to go through here with next i also want to pull this from embroidery now in my test go i was using our down or our block five which is what i want to enhance with the crystal work now let's finish and there's our cute little design right there and you can see you know we just made this and have stitched it out and we love it but now what I want to do is zoom in 
Well, let's zoom out a little bit. Maybe go to 300%. There we go. All right, so this is our embroidery design. We're really not going to stitch this out in here, but what I want to know is this little area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ellipse maker. And all I want to do is just pick this design and kind of make it so that it fits nicely in this little area here. And that kind of, I like that. So now once I brought an item in like this, over here on the uh, right side of the screen is our object properties. I don't want to fill, so I'm going to get rid of that. And for my outline, I don't want any stitching. So all I want to do is create an outline of crystals, just a little circle of crystals. And so that's where I'm going to pick the crystals here. Also today, I'm using the really small ones. They are about, they're just a wee, 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 little bit larger than two millimeter. And that is this size right here. So I'm going to select that. And then if you are a very visual person, you can also sort of look at the color. Ours are fairly clear, but I'm going to go ahead and pick these crystals because I think they're going to show up a little bit better for you right here. So this is what I have just created. Now, I don't need any of this other stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and delete our embroidery design. And this is the only thing I need. Right, so once you get a design that you like and you're ready to send it, all you have to do is go to File export and now there are two versions here you can see one of them is grayed out now if you do cut work and you do paint work you usually pick this option but on this one we have to say crystals to machine and then just click the little swiss flag your exp and then it will send it right to your stick but your stick has to be put in the machine pro tip let's stitch this bugger out all right, let's look at all of the things that we need for crystal work. So crystal work, once again, it is a design work software element where you can make templates to bling your stuff consistently. So the first thing you need is something to bling. So we are gonna bling out a little circle on the center of our embroidery design that we just made here. So. We have the thing to bling. Now, you can also bling things that aren't fabric. You can bling, you know what? If it can hold still, you can bling it, let's be honest. So, you need that. Then, you're going to need the Bernina Crystal Work tool. And this will do sizes SS06, SS10, SS12, and SS16. We're going to be working in the real small ones today. So, we're going to be using the SS06. And I've got like a pile of my SS06 in a uh, crystal color here. So that's what we're going to use. We're also going to need a little crystal picker. This is, you know, for some stubborn ones that just don't want to behave. So you might need one of these. Uh, you're also going to need your crystal template material. Now this is green and it has an adhesive on the back. It looks like this. And this is ultimately what we're going to be making our holes into for our crystal template. So we're going to, at, once we make the holes in this, then we're gonna peel and stick it onto like a cardstock or a cardboard material. Then you're also gonna need, and I'm gonna show you this in just a minute, how I use parchment uh, material to hoop that up. And then finally, the piece de resistance is the transfer film. So this is the stuff that you stick your crystals to, and you can give as a friend if you have like a little decal or something that you want them to bling something that'll hold still. Um, but this is the transfer material, and I'm gonna show you why and how you're gonna use that too. Good old parchment paper from the grocery store. And I'm just gonna rip off enough to do this in my large hoop. For those of you that have been doing embroidery for a long time, this goes against everything that you've learned. But we're going to hoop this the grandma way. The hand embroidery grandma way. 
So that means that we put this around our top hoop and we slip this into place just like so. Look at that. Yeah, seems so wrong, doesn't it? Now I'm just tightening this up. Okay. And then you don't want a whole bunch of this extra stuff. So I just trim around the bottom. go all right so this is ready for the machine which means that we should be setting up the machine so I'll meet you over there I'm gonna put all of our star players right here the foot the um, SS06 size with the right cutter and then first thing is we need to take our needle out our needle is replaced with this little chisel guy right here. I don't know. So that's the thing that's gonna be cutting our little holes. And just like our needle, this has a flat piece that goes to the back. So it'll fit in there. There we go. Ta-da. And then this little cup is actually gonna sit in your machine. And then the piece goes right on the bottom like that. Now, you do wanna take some precautions before you get started, and that's to turn the hand wheel to make sure that our piece goes right down in there. And that looks pretty good to me. All right. Now, next thing, the foot. All right, the foot is on. Now, the hoop. And then the design. I've placed my USB stick that has my design on it. And here's my design right there. And now we're ready to do this magic. I can't believe it. It's... All right, so now that we've got our design in there, we've got everything loaded in place. Now I'm just going to put my green template stuff down. There it is. All right, I hope you like experiments. Here we go. All right, so all I need to do now is tell my machine that I've got my crystal work foot on. And now I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna press this flashing green button. Look, if you would have blinked, you would have missed it. Okay, here's our design that got punched. Look at that, super cute. So now we take this and we're not gonna need that stuff anymore, but now I wanna take a piece of my cardstock and just lay this down like so. Here we go. And just smush that guy down. And there's that piece. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little tub, something where we can kind of pour out our little um, crystals. I have my crystals. I've got my little SS06s. I poured those out into here. I'm using my little spongy brushy thing to get everything nicely tucked down in there and just, you know, let them behave. Oh, that's just, I love it. Look at that. They all behave very nicely. 
And I like how iridescent these are. Okay. Now sometimes there's a couple that get a little stubborn. So I just pick those off with some tweezers. Okay, so now the next piece that we wanna do, I'm gonna set this bin aside. Is we want to use our transfer film. So we've got the base here and that is, um, we're gonna use this to to stick it to, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our design and put it right against the sticky bit of this transfer film. Don't forget, if I didn't mention this, our little crystals need to be pretty side up. So when they go onto the film, the pretty side up is sticking against this transfer plastic. And there you go. Now, if you're not ready to stick this on something straight away, you've got your little piece ready to go or ready to give us a little gift. I'm gonna take our piece with our perfectly little round, beautiful circle. And we're gonna line that up right in the middle. This plastic is clear, so it's easy for you to see through when you, when you need to add your bling. And now these are hot fix crystals that have the glue right on the back. And, uh, and yeah, so this should be pretty easy. It's key that you use hot fix crystals. Otherwise, you're just getting hot crystals for no reason. Okay. Ooh, that one needed a little bit longer. There we go. have a look. Well, it's gorgeous. Just adds the right kind of sparkle I was looking for. All right, congratulations. You got through block five. It wasn't so bad. And don't forget, you're going to get an email very shortly if you signed up for this. That means you've bought the designs from uh, BerninaofNaperville.com and just search, go to BerninaofNaperville.com and search Embroidery Sampler and you will see the item. And once you purchase that, you're going to get your first blocks instructions and then you're going to get all an email of all of the instructions. <laughs> and, um, and then for those of you who have already signed up, you know the drill. We premiere the video and then in your inbox, ding, ding, you get a link to an interactive PDF that's going to take you to time stamps of this video that you just watched and more specific cutting instructions and everything like that. But thank you for sticking with us so far and uh, we're almost halfway there because next lesson is block six and this is block six. So we're going to combine designs and then we're going to take our combined designs and hoop those up. So for some of you, this might be a four hooper and for others, it'll be a two hooper, but we're going to break out the sewing machine with the decorative stitching. And then we're also going to be using the ruler work foot and some Bernina stitch regulator work. So look forward to that in two weeks. So here is, here's the block for next time. And speaking of next time, maybe you want to check out some other tutorials that we have. It's pretty easy. Just go to youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe, and check out all of our other videos. We are almost up to 200, and we are almost at 10,000 subscribers. There's only a few more to go, so tell your friends and share out some of these videos because, hey, the more people that know about us, the more fun we can have on YouTube, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, can't wait to uh, show you how the rest of these blocks go together. Bye-bye.